the survival guide to Amazon ads. Today, I'm gonna to be going over a simple optimization and scaling strategy for your Amazon PPC. This is gonna increase your profits, it's gonna increase your sales, and it's gonna make you spend less time and less money, and you're gonna worry less on Amazon PPC. So let's jump right in. Who am I? I'm Dr. Travis Ziegler. I'm the president and founder of iLove. We actually sold our company in 2021, and we're on pace to do about six to seven million this year. I'm also the founder and the CEO of Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency, and we've helped thousands with the strategies that you're going to learn today around Amazon PPC, DSP, and attribution, and that's what we do for our clients as well. We, we focus on PPC, DSP, attribution, we form a moat around your Amazon listing. I seriously just have a passion for helping other entrepreneurs. I actually used to be a professor at the Ohio State University College of Optometry before I actually started doing this. I used to be an optometrist. And now I do this full time. And so my superpowers are Amazon PPC, which you're going to learn a lot about today and audience building. I do have an audience building course. It is absolutely free. You can go to profitablepineapple.com forward slash audience, profitablepineapple.com forward slash audience to go check that out. It's absolutely free. It's how we built audience and how we're getting 200 leads per day and converting them into Amazon customers. But you're here for Amazon PPC. So let's jump in. So what we're going to be covering today. We're going, to teach you, we're going to teach you how to calculate your ACOS goal and why low ACOS targets are killing your sales. We're going to teach you one quick change that you can apply to your Amazon PPC campaigns today that will increase your sales, profit, and organic rank while decreasing your ACOS. And I'm going to teach you my way, way too easy Amazon PPC strategy, a surefire secret to create highly profitable Amazon PPC campaigns that sell like crazy, and how to avoid the number one mistake that Amazon sellers are making. So who is this for? This is for people that are just getting started. If you're just getting started in this Amazon game, this is gonna be a great crash course on how to start your Amazon PPC journey, but it's even better for experienced Amazon sellers. So it's great for both, but experienced Amazon sellers, you're gonna you're gonna learn how to scale your Amazon PPC and what you're currently doing. So let's jump right in. So chapter one, your ACOS gold is wrong and I'm sick and tired of hearing this. I see it in, in groups all the time, in different forums, people bragging about their 10% ACOS or their 12% ACOS or their 15% ACOS. Your ACOS goal, it doesn't matter what that you're getting a 10 to 15%. I, I, I argue that if you're going for a low ACOS, you're actually leaving sales on the table. You need to figure out and calculate what your ACOS should be and then build your campaign around that. And so what is your ACOS? I'm going to teach you that. So what your ACOS should be is your break-even ACOS. And I'm going to teach you different strategies around the break-even ACOS, but the first thing we need to do with every product that you have is calculate your break-even ACOS. And to do that, we're going to first calculate your maximum cost per acquisition. Your maximum cost per acquisition, this, it's not a hard formula. It's very easy. I'm going to show it to you live here in just a little bit, but it's simply your sales price minus your Amazon fees minus your cost of goods sold. It's also known as your profit. Your profit or your maximum cost per acquisition is a very important number. We're going to use that twice in this presentation, once in chapter one and once in a further chapter you're going to see in just a little bit. So after we figured out your profit, we want to figure out your profit margin, which is just simply your maximum cost per acquisition your profit divided by your sales price. And that will give you your profit margin. And that is your break-even ACOS. You should be shooting for a break-even ACOS at least in order to drive organic rank for more sales. So let's talk about target ACOS a little bit. So you can see with this mathematical formula that our break-even ACOS is 42%. Now this is a consumable. So on my consumables, I actually like to go 10% above break-even ACOS. So I'm gonna be a little more aggressive because I wanna get more clients in the door, new client acquisition. I wanna get more clients in and I'll pay more to do that because I know they'll come back to order more. Now, if you're selling a plastic widget from China or something that's not consumable, I'd go for under break-even ACOS. So maybe 10% under, 32%. If you're in launch mode, I'd maybe go for 20% over break-even ACOS or maybe even higher than that. And you can even just go for break-even if you want. It just depends on what you're doing and where you're at in your business. What's right for you? I don't know. Every business is different. Consumables, like I said, I go 10 to 20% over. Launching, we go over. Profit, if we're running low on stock, we'll then shoot for under. And if we're selling something that's a one-off item, we'll go for under break-even ACOS. But just remember that your advertising sales will drive more organic ranking because Amazon loves sales velocity. Sales velocity is the name of this game. 
So the more sales you get, the higher you're going to rank organically. The better your conversion rate, the higher you're going to rank organically. So just keep that in mind when you're calculating that target ACOS. So this is a client of ours that we started with in January of 2021, and they were at about 150,000, 120,000 per month when we we helped when we started with them. And in December of 2021, we got them all the way up to 260,000. This is not really a giftable product. Some of it is, but not really all of it. But then now they're even, and we're recording this in July of 2022, we've now got this client up to 500,000 a month in revenue. Now, is it all PPC? No, of course not. But they delegated the PPC to us. Now they're able to focus on new product development and we're able to scale their PPC ads. And so this is a combination of Amazon PPC at the beginning and we had a DSP and now we're doing Google as well. So a combination of all three of those have just lifted this entire account, but his time's freed up to come out with new product development and build that audience. So your action items for chapter one, calculate your break-even ACOS and determine your target ACOS. Shoot for a break-even ACOS at least and not a low ACOS. If you're just going after a low ACOS, you're leaving sales on the table. You can increase your organic rank by increasing the ACOS you go, are going after. Be aggressive, be -E aggressive. So let's jump over to my screen. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this. It's very simple. So here we are in one of my listings and I have the Helium 10 Chrome extension and I'm gonna scroll down here. And once I scroll down, you're gonna see the Helium 10 calculator right here. So revenue calculator. FBA is right here. So 1997, our product cost, let's just say it's $4. Our fees are 672. That leads to $9.25. This is your profit, your net, and this is your maximum cost per acquisition. So I'm going to pull up a calculator. I'm going to put in $9.22, or 25 cents, sorry, divided by my selling price, which is $19.97. That's going to give us a decimal, 0 0.46. So 46% is our break-even ACOS. You want to take it a step further. There you go. Times it by 100. So 46% is our break-even ACOS for this product. So I'm going to jot that down. And as we change prices or do anything like that, that's going to adjust that, that break-even ACOS. But you don't change prices too much. So 46% is our break-even. For this product, it is a consumable. So I'm going to go after 56%. So I'm going to go out a little more aggressive. When I want to switch to profit, I'm going to go for probably under or maybe at break-even ACOS. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Chapter two, trim the waste with negative phrase keywords. Negative keyword lists don't have to take you hours and hours to create. I see a lot of people waste a lot of time on negative keywords and they stress about this. But the 80-20 of negative keywords, what's gonna make the biggest impact is a phrase keyword list. And what I wanna do today is show you how to make one in less than five minutes. I see sellers either not using keywords because they're too confused by them, negative keywords, or they're going after too many. A negative exact keyword isn't going to make a big difference. I'll, I'll show you examples of when it does, but usually it will not. And so a negative phrase keyword list, and that's going to be your master negative phrase list for your product listing. And so it will make it a lot easier for you to just be able to have this one, key, uh, this one master keyword list for that product. Now, every time you start a new broad auto or phrase campaign, you're going to just upload this. It's very simple to do, but let's jump in and I'll show you how it's done. Now, I'm going to show you two different examples. In the slides, I'm going to show you how to do it with Cerebro by Helium 10. And then live, I'm going to show you how to do it with Magnet by Helium 10. So this is Cerebro. And what we did here is we took just our six top competitors in this space and we put them in the search bar. We hit get keywords. And the key thing that we're looking at is the word frequency count. And the word frequency count are the, is the words that are coming up frequently with these products, with our competitors. And what we're looking for are words that show up a lot that don't apply to our product. And so what we're gonna do is start a, a spreadsheet. And on that spreadsheet, we're just gonna start a list of words that don't apply to our product. And then every once in a while, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that list of negative keywords we're going to take it over to the Frankenstein, Frankenstein tool at Helium 10, and we're going to make a paragraph with it. You can see with this one, I got really deep with keywords. I got 155 words right here, which I don't recommend going that much, but this is just a, a, an anomaly. So then what I do is I add commas with spaces, I maintain phrases, and then I hit process. 
and it will process it into this paragraph form. I then take it back over to Cerebro. I put it in the exclude phrases that contain list. And then I hit apply again. What that's going to do is it's going to come up with a new set of keywords and a new word frequency list that's going to eliminate what I just put in there. So once we do that, we're going to look at the word frequency list again, and we're going to repeat that process. We're just going to keep adding more negative phrase lists to our negative phrase list. And then we're going to go back to Frankenstein, make a paragraph, put it back in the exclude phrase that contains list. And then after that, after we've done that a couple of times, we're then going to come down here to the actual keywords. And I like to sort it by search volume with the most search being at the top. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to look at the words that are at the top that are getting the most searches to see if any of those are irrelevant and add it to my list as well. Now, if you got lost there a little bit, don't worry, I'm going to show you a live example with me actually doing it here in just a little bit. So your action items for this is you're going to build out your negative phrase list for each of your products. So let's jump over to my screen and I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. So in the example in the slides, I use Cerebro. So you just put in your ASINs for your biggest competitor, hit get keywords and it pop populates keywords for you. For Magnet, what I'm going to do is you should have an idea of what your best keywords are for your product. If not, then you probably shouldn't be selling that product. So I'm going to show you an example with eyelid cleanser. So I put an eyelid cleanser into Magnet. I hit get keywords. And when I scroll down, you can see this word frequency list right here. And so ours is for an eyelid cleanser. So I, eyelid, lid, those are all relevant. We're not a spray though. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in spray right here. We're not a wipe. So I'm going to put wipe and wipes. We're not OcuSoft, which is a competitor. I don't like going after competitors, especially at the beginning of if you're just launching a product because competitor keywords are going to be very expensive compared to other keywords. And so I recommend getting rid of competitors right away. Um, if you're at a more seasoned point of that product, you may go after competitors. Just know it's going to raise your ACOs and it's going to be a lot more expensive. And so I usually avoid competitors, especially at the beginning. Then you can see wash. It is an eye wash. Eyelashes, it's good for lashes. Um, I'm thinking in my head though, I don't want this to go after false lashes. So I'm going to put false and magnetic. We're not an acid. So there are acids out in the eye care space that work really well. We are a foam. We are a cleaner. We are eyes and we are for dry eye. So we have our first word frequency list kind of wiped out. So what I'm going to do is take this, copy it, come over to Frankenstein, paste it into here. I'm going to maintain phrases and I'm going to make sure add commas with space. Now I'm going to take this, go back to magnet. I'm going to scroll back up to exclude phrases that contain. And I'm going to copy those into there. I'm going to apply filter and it's going to come up with a brand new set of keywords and a brand new word frequency list. Now the first couple are going to be exactly what we had before. The next one's foam cleaner. We had those drops. So we're not an eye drop. So I'm going to put drop drops and we're not a tier tier tears and then artificial tears is what it's going after there so you can see that right here drops tears tier tears i put all those in there so we're going to do that same thing again we're going to come up here come over to frankenstein hit process down below we're going to grab this come back to magnet come back up to exclude phrases that contain and apply filters. Pretty simple. Avanova, that's another competitor of ours. So I'm gonna put that in here. Pads, we are not a pad. So I'm gonna put those into here. So again, you're gonna do that same thing. Put it into there, hit process, pull this back over to magnet. I know I'm doing this fast, but you can always slow down this video if you need to. And then looking through this looks pretty good. Now I see tree, so tea tree oil. Now this is an example of one that I want to get rid of the exact. I don't wanna rank for tea tree oil or just tea tree. When people are searching for that, they're specifically searching for the essential oil and we have tea tree oil in our eyelid cleanser, but we're not tea tree oil. So I don't wanna rank for those exact, but I do wanna rank for tea tree face wash or tea tree eyelid cleanser. So I don't wanna put those as phrase, I'm going to put those as exact. So here's my limited neg negative phrase list. 
and I put that right here. And now what we're gonna do is scroll down here and you can see search volume. I'm gonna click search volume highest to lowest. And you can see right here, some really high ones. So we're not makeup, we're not lashes and we're not eyelashes, but people will search. I'm gonna put those in over here in exact because we want to we want to rank for eyelash cleanser, but we don't rank for eyelashes because people that are searching for lashes and eyelashes are searching for fake eyelashes. Face wash, I don't want to rank and I don't want to bid after face wash, so I'm going to put face and facial because I don't want to rank or, or bid for those because we're an eyelid cleanser. We're going after eyelid cleansing. So let's look at tape, FSA, HSA. I'm going to get rid of both of those. So tape. FSA, HSA, which is health savings account and flex spending account, a lash extension kit. Now I will put extension in here. That will help eliminate quite a few um, keywords that we're gonna bid on. Uh, we have nothing to do with makeup or removing makeup. You could use it for that, but I'm not gonna rank for that. I don't, I, or I don't wanna bid on it because it doesn't specifically say it on the bottle or anything. Um, we're not an eyelash extension kit. So I'm gonna put kit in there. Uh, we're not Neosporin, so I'm just going to put a couple of those in there because those are pretty big, widely searched words in Cetaphil. I don't really want to fight with Cetaphil. That's going to be a pretty uphill battle. And uh, Vino, the same thing. And we're not a makeup brush. So I'm literally just going down this and finding words that don't make sense for my campaigns. Eye makeup remover, eyelashes, lash extension supplies. Let's put supplies in there. And then I just put brush, uh, cat dog, because we're not for a cat or dog. A vapor pen. I'm guessing we're getting a little far outside now. Um, Sulfate-free shampoo. We're not shampoo. We're not conditioner. For both of those. And I think that should do it. Eczema, we're not for, I uh, know we could be, we could say eczema. Uh, we're not a mask. So brooder, um, eye mask and compress. And so I don't want to rank for any of those because those are kind of related. And then we're not Spanish and we're not contact lenses. So lentes, contacto, contact lenses. So that should be good. So that's 41 different words right there that we're going to show up or we're not going to show up for now. And that's 41 different possible phrases that we're not going to show up for. Now that's going to eliminate a ton of keywords that we don't want to rank for because we don't want to show up for those because it's irrelevant to our product. I'm going to put face wash in there too. It's one word. And so this is going to save you a ton of money if you do this for every product. And as you see, I just did it in less than five minutes. It does not take you long to do it on a per product basis. All right. So again, your action items, build out your negative phrase list for each of your products. Chapter three, my way too easy Amazon PPC strategy. Now, the number one mistake I see sellers make, and this doesn't matter if you're doing 10,000 a month or 500,000 a month, we've seen it all in our agency, is that they're not following one specific strategy system. They're kind of all over the place. They hear a YouTube channel here, they hear a podcast over here, and they try to implement all these different strategies in their Amazon PPC campaigns, and there's no consistency in them. And so, as I'm going over this, I want you to think about the strategy that you can develop around this. And we've been following the same strategy for the last three years, and it's worked incredibly well. It's taken me from a 50% ACOS to a 37% ACOS while increasing my sales. And so this is something that, that can be huge for you if you follow one strategy. And that's what I'm going to be going over today. And our, our strategy is very simple. We focus on Pareto's principle. Pareto's principle states that 20% of your employees produce 80% of your results. 20% of your customers create 80% of your revenue. And in the case with Amazon sellers or e-commerce entrepreneurs, 20% of your products produce 80% of your revenue. I'm going to say that again. 20% of your products produce 80% of your revenue. Think about that. 20% of your products are producing 80% of your results. So what does that mean? It, it's simple. Focus all of your Amazon PPC budget on the 20% of products that are producing the results. Your profit will go up. Your revenue will go up. Your sales will go up. Stop worrying about the products that you can't get to take off. 
discontinue them, get rid of them. If you have a hundred products, 20 of those products are producing the results for you. The other 80 are just being, they're honestly just a pain in your ass. If you have 20 products, four of those products are producing your results. That's the case with us. We have about six products that are producing all of our results. If you have a thousand products, 200 of those are producing the results. Get rid of the other 800, lay off some staff members, sorry, but lay off some staff members, save yourself some money, focus on the 200. So just think about that. 20% of your products are producing 80% of your results. Now I wanna show you this with I Love's example. This is our top two, four, five products. So 20% of our products are producing 68% of the profit. So why wouldn't I just focus on that 20%? Put all your budget behind that. What will happen then is people, as they start to trust your brand, as they start to buy your products, is they'll spill over to those other products if you want to keep them, just naturally. And you don't have to spend a lot of money trying to push those products. Because believe me, I've been there. I've done it in the past. I know you're probably doing it too. So action item for this one, it's a simple one. Study and obsess until you can really grasp the 80-20 strategy. And we're not done with that yet. Pinpoint the 20% of products that are producing 80% of your results. It's very simple. I use Helium 10. I just look at my trailing 12 months and you can literally see it. Like your top 20% or your top 20 of your products produce all your results. It's that simple. So let's do a brief recap. I want you to rethink your ACOS, calculate your break-even ACOS, and figure out where your target is depending on what your product is. I then want you to create a negative phrase keyword list. It takes you less than five minutes per product, and you need to upload that right away to your broad phrase and auto campaigns. It's going to save you thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. And then finally, focus on the 20% of your products that produce 80% of your profits. Chapter four, the 80-20 part two. I wanna go back to Pareto's principle. So again, let's go over it again. I really want this to sink in. 20% of your input creates 80% of your results. 20% of what you're doing on a daily basis is producing 80% of the results in your business and in your life. Uh, an example of a workout. I work out around my, my neighborhood. I live in the hills of Texas. It's very hilly, but there's one hill that destroys me. And it probably gives me the most gain during my workout. It's the 80, 20 of my workout. It's the 20% of my workout. Cause it's only quarter mile, half mile long, but it gives me 80% of the gains from that workout. Cause it gets my heart rate up. It pushes me. It gets me out of breath. The 80, 20, 20% of your input that you're doing on your daily basis to your Amazon business is producing 80% of the results. Get rid of everything else, automate it, delegate it, eliminate it. Just get rid of it. 20% of your workers are creating 80% of your results. 20% of your customers create 80% of your revenue. Focus on those customers and you'll make even more money. 20% of the bugs cause 80% of the crashes. 20% of the features cause 80% of the usage. 20% of your products are producing 80% of your revenue. Now let's turn it back into Amazon PPC. 20% of your customer search terms on Amazon drive 80% of your sales. Again, repeating for emphasis, 20% of your search terms that you're bidding on, on Amazon are creating 80% of your sales. So what you need to do is you need to mine and organize your search term report. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's very simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to reports and go to advertising reports. After you do that, this screen will come up. You're gonna create a report going back 60 days. And what I like to do is usually leave a five-day attribution window. A five-day attribution window means that today is July 8th, and I'm going to go back July 1st and go two months before that. So May 1st to July 1st, because I'm going to leave a five to seven-day window where Amazon can catch up with the sales. After that, after we hit create report, we're going to download it. And then I like to upload it to Google Sheets, but if you like using Excel, you can use Excel. But I go to file and import it into Google Sheets. I then like to take the data and I highlight it all by hitting this little button right here. And what I do then is I click data, sort range, and I sort the range from Z to A with orders, by orders. And then what I do then is I actually delete everything that doesn't have three orders or more, focusing on the 80-20. I probably have 10,000 words in my search term report and I eliminate it pretty much down to the 500. 
So I eliminate even further than just the 80-20. We get really granular with this. So after you sort it and after you delete all those words, we're then gonna calculate our starting bid that we wanna bid on that keyword. The starting bid is your maximum cost per click, which is simply your maximum cost per acquisition. I told you it would come back, which you calculated in chapter one, break even ACOS, divided by your clicks to order ratio. Now, that was a lot of math. And I know you're like, okay, I'm out, I'm done, but I'm gonna show you how easy it can be with an Excel spreadsheet or with a Google sheet. And I'm gonna show you an example here live in just a little bit. But this is, this is just some pictures of it. So the clicks to order ratio is simply your clicks divided by your orders. Click to order ratio, very simple, clicks over orders. And so I make a column called clicks to orders and I make equals sum parentheses, clicks divided by orders, enter, that's it. After that, we're gonna figure out our maximum cost per acquisition, our profit, which is our net when we've calculated it on our listing the other, the last time. And then finally, your break-even cost per click is simply your maximum cost per acquisition divided by your clicks to order ratio. It's that simple, it doesn't have to be hard. So then what I do is after I, I put all those formulas in, I then separate all the products into their own tabs. Now this is very easy if you're very organized with your Amazon PPC, it's very hard if you're not. So what we do is we like to put all of our campaigns into portfolios and portfolios, will, we do it by product, by ASIN. You should never have more than one product in a campaign. And I'll show you here in a little bit how we set up our campaigns that makes it even easier still. But all campaigns should go into portfolios to keep better track of what products are being advertised and how. So this is what it looks like after all said and done. We've put our clicks to order ratio in. We've put our maximum cost per acquisition in, which is our profit number. And then when we put that formula in for maximum cost per acquisition divided by clicks to order, it then spits out our maximum bid that we can do for that keyword. And it actually makes some sense because if you see right here on this top one, it's got 103% ACOS. So we want to have a pretty low cost per click, 79 cents right here. And then when you look at something like this one, 29%, oops, let me go back. So we got 29% right here. If you go over, you'll see $2.13 right there. So we can bid a little bit more for that one. So after we've organized it and separated it out into products, we're then gonna sort those from top orders to bottom orders. So most orders to the least orders. And we're gonna find the 20% of the search terms that are producing 80% of the results for that specific product. And when I look at this, this is what I find. So three, even one, one search term creates 153 orders. The next closest search term is 29. And so that's huge, that's a huge difference. But the first three words are the 80-20. So we're gonna focus on those three words for the next steps. So how do you structure this? So we've got our three words. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna build out campaigns around those three words. And it's very simple. One search term per campaign. Repeating for emphasis. One search term per campaign. Now, I probably hear you saying, why would you do one search term per campaign? It's because you can customize the entire experience for that search term. You can customize the entire campaign, the budget, the bidding strategy, which I usually only use dynamic bids down only because it's the best. And then you can, the best part is you can adjust the bids by placement, the bottom here. You can adjust the top of search or product pages based on what that keyword, how, the, how it drives the results. So everything can be customized for that specific search term that we're putting in to that specific campaign. One search term, one campaign, one product. One campaign, one ad group, one search term, one product. I don't want multiple keywords in there. I don't want multiple ad groups in there. I don't want multiple products in there. I want one campaign to have one product, one ad group, one search term. I hope I didn't lose you there. It's very simple. 
<clears throat> so what we're going to do first is we're going to make our scale campaigns, which are our exact match campaigns. So we're going to take the three search terms that we found at the top of that search term report, and we're going to make three separate campaigns, all exact match. And we can customize the budget, which you can bid a lot more usually for these. And we calculated the bid that we're going to start with in that, in that sheet. You can customize the budget, the top of search placement. I usually like to just start the top of search at like 20% or so. Um, but you can usually go a little higher with these words because they've shown to be profitable and they've shown to be high converting words and they've shown to make a lot of orders for you. So don't be afraid to be a little more aggressive with these keywords. And then, like I said, down, down bid only in the bidding strategy. Now, if you have, if you've built out all the exact match campaigns for your products, for all your products, and you still have budget left over, then we move on to more discovery campaigns. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a broad match around the three search terms that we found in our search term report. So exact match is scale campaigns, we do those first. If we have budget left over, we do broad campaigns around those same three search terms. But with a broad match campaign, again, same thing, one keyword, one campaign, one product. So you're gonna make three exact match keyword. So you have three search terms, you're gonna create three exact match, then you're gonna create three broad match. With the broad match though, we're gonna take that negative phrase keyword list we found and upload that. And if you did come up with any negative exact keywords, put those in as well. But we're gonna upload that negative list to save us a lot of money. If you still have budget left over, you can then create an auto campaign. Broad and auto campaigns are for discovery only. They're not gonna scale. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. They're gonna discover new search terms that you can then extract out and take over to the exact match. They're also gonna discover new ASINs, which I haven't really got into in this lecture because search terms are gonna drive a lot more scale than ASINs will. So this was a beefy chapter. Your action items for this chapter are to mine and organize your search term report. Then create your scale search terms or scale campaigns. Create single keyword exact match campaigns with these 80, 20 search terms. Then if budget allows, create broad match single keyword ad campaigns with the same 80, 20 search terms and auto campaigns. And if you have the budget, do the auto campaigns and make sure that you're uploading negative phrase lists to these broad campaigns and the auto campaigns. Now I hear somebody asking, what about phrase campaigns? Phrase campaigns are just another discovery platform. If you have budget, use it to explore, but it's not necessary. This process can also be done for your sponsored brand campaigns and your sponsored display campaigns, but focus on sponsored product campaigns, your search term campaigns that I just went over, because that should be the majority of your budget, and that's where scale occurs is in sponsored products. It does not occur in sponsored brands and display as much. That's more for broad awareness. Now let's jump over to my screen and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. All right, so here is a search term report that I have downloaded. I've hit a lot of the columns just for simplicity. Here's my customer search term column though. You can see it says customer search term. Now, these are all the, the data points. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add three columns, clicks to orders, maximum CPA, maximum CPC. Clicks to orders is simply your clicks divided by your orders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit the sum button up here and I'm gonna click sum. You can see it says sum. I'm gonna do clicks divided by orders. Hit enter. What that's gonna do is it's gonna suggest an autofill. Click that. This is how many clicks it takes for you to get an order. So three, every 3.11 clicks, you get an order. For this product, let's go back to this product. Scroll down to figure out our break-even ACOS again, or not our break-even ACOS, sorry, our profit. So we'll put four as our number in there. So our net is 925. So 925 is the maximum cost per acquisition. It's our profit. So these two are gonna be dollar signs. Now this can go all the way down. It will, just keep that in mind. I'm not quite there yet. So your maximum cost per click is gonna be the sum 
of your maximum cost per acquisition divided by your clicks to order ratio and autofill. So now that you've had that and you've figured that out, you can now separate this out into individual products. So when I separate it out into individual products, I bring it over here. So now this is that specific product that we just talked about. And you can see these are all orders that, oop, we have a couple stragglers in there. Let's get rid of those. Now you can see that we have 66 keywords in here that have produced $14,537 in sales. Now, if you look at this though, most of them, so 66 keywords, 80, 20, 60 is gonna be about 12 words. So these are gonna be our 80, 20. Now let's put our maximum cost per acquisition there. And we're just gonna drag these down. So what you can see here is now that we've got the 20% of my search terms that are producing 80% of my results is I'm going to create my campaigns around this. So we have about 10 campaigns here. You can see there's some ASINs in here. So usually what I do here is I'll separate out the ASINs from the keywords as well to focus on just the keywords. But for the keywords that are here, so there's six there. I'm going to create six exact match campaigns, six separate exact match campaigns, one for each keyword in here. My starting bid is going to be this maximum cost per click right here, as we calculated according to that keyword. Now, if we go to the ASINs, I'm not going to get into this in this, this webinar, but the ASINs, we can make product targeting ads with that and we know our maximum cost per click for those. But I wanna focus on the ones that are actually gonna scale me, which are these. So I'm gonna make a single keyword exact campaign for those search terms with the bid that I calculated right over here. If budget allows, I'm then gonna make six broad match campaigns with those six keywords with this starting bid. And I'm gonna upload the negative phrase list. And then finally, if budget still allows, I'll, up, I'll do an auto campaign with the negative phrase uploaded, the negative phrase list uploaded. I hope that makes sense. If you, if you got lost there at all, just let me know down in the comments, put any questions that you have and I'd be happy to answer them. Chapter five, pausing keywords. So what I see with keywords and with Amazon PPC is there's a lot of emotion involved. Of course, there's a lot of stress and there's of course a lot of math and people don't like to do math. Now, what I'm gonna teach you in this section, it's gonna remove that emotion. It's gonna remove the stress, hopefully. And it's just following math. It's that simple. We're gonna focus on the 20% that is driving 80% of the results with this strategy. So this is my criteria for pausing. If you have 10 clicks and your ACOS is above 100%, Pause it. There are some exceptions to the rule, which I'll show you, but just pause it. If you have 10 clicks with zero orders, that's a pretty low conversion rate. Just pause it. Now, if you have 10 clicks, your ACOS is above your break even ACOS, but it's not quite over 100%, then you need to analyze it a little bit more. What I usually do is if it has less than five orders, I'll pause it. They're not really contributing to sales velocity, they're, they're unprofitable, they're not helping you in any way. If they're above the target ACOS, but they're making a lot of sales, I usually try to optimize those campaigns. I try to bring that ACOS down. Sometimes you can't, but sometimes you can. So the key thing here is remove the emotion out of it and just focus on the math. So how we do this is we set a 30-day attribution window, or excuse me, a 30-day window with a five-day attribution. So again, in this example with the picture, it's March 7th, 2020. So I'm gonna leave a five day attribution window. It's March 17th, it should say. It's March 17th. So we're gonna leave a five day attribution window and we're gonna do from February 12th to March 12th. We're then gonna click the filters on of active status enabled, ACOS above hundred. And then we're just gonna pause them. And then we're gonna do active status enabled, 
greater than 10 clicks, zero orders, and pause them. And then finally, we're going to do our break-even ACOs and analyze them. So in this example, I'm going to keep these because they're making more than five sales. And the ACOs isn't that crazy. It's just a little higher, but it's still, especially the one that's doing 37 orders in 30 days, that's one a day. That's pretty good. Now let's go to this one. So I'm going to pause all these because you're making one sale every 30 days. Is it really worth it to keep those on? Let's shift that budget into something that's working. So your action item for this is screenshot my criteria, which I'll pull up here in just a little bit, and put this in your calendar to do it weekly. Pause weekly. So screenshot this. This is the criteria. And then I'm going to go into an example on my screen. All right, so here we are inside my campaign manager. The first thing I'm gonna do is the date range. So we're gonna take this and today, as I'm recording this, it is July 8th of 2022. I'm gonna go back in time about five days. So we're gonna do June 3rd to July 3rd. We're gonna hit save, let that pull up. After that pulls up, we're gonna filter by active status and enabled and click apply. Next, we're going to filter by ACOS greater than 100%. All right, so we have 17 results that are enabled that have an ACOS of over 100%. Now, you're going to see some exceptions to my rule because these are producing two orders a day. So I'm okay with it getting a little higher in ACOS to drive sales velocity. Now let's look at this one. This one's driving two sales a day with a higher ACOS as well. It's one of our best sellers. So I'm going to leave that one and this one as well. Yes, those ACOS are crazy high, but they drive a lot of velocity. So let's scroll down a little bit more. Now four sales over the course of a month, not a big deal to me. So I'm going to take all of these off. Not worth keeping. But I am a little bit more aggressive with advertising, so I will go into the 100% if it's driving a lot of velocity. Even this one's only driving one every other day, so I'm going to take that one off too. But these other ones, that's a brand one, so I'm going to keep that. And then these, I know they they're high ACOS words anyway. All right, so next, we're going to change the ACOS to just over break even, which for this product, or we'll just do, I think we did 46%. And then we're going to analyze again. So let's take a look. So 266 orders in 30 days. I'm definitely keeping that one. That one's staying on no matter what, because it's doing a lot. And it's only at 55%. It's really not that bad. I usually tend to be a little more aggressive with my advertising. These are all driving a significant volume. And so I'm not really going to mess with those. Same with these. And then this ACOS is still pretty low. So I'm going to leave those as well. So I might even add one more filter on here and do orders less than four. Let's take a look at those. So these are all above my break-even ACOS. They're not really driving much volume because it's only been, but you can see these all actually just started. And so I'll keep those on because they still have time to optimize. So I'm going to remove all those. So there's 53 results. Yeah, most of these have kind of just started. And so I'm going to let them try to optimize themselves before I pause them. Let's also do filter by clicks greater than 10 and orders of equal to zero. No results, so that's good. So I don't have to pause any there. But you can see how quick this is. This will save you so much money and it will make you so much money because then that budget will go towards more profitable campaigns. Chapter six, taking everything with Amazon PPC to the next level. Now, I remember this back in 2019. I was very overwhelmed with my business. I was doing so much work in Amazon PPC. I had started the agency. We had four clients at that time. And... It was just a lot of work to be doing this Amazon PPC thing. Doing all this for your own business is very overwhelming. Doing it for multiple businesses is even more overwhelming. And I was just, I, I was feeling burnt out. I didn't know what else to do. And I remember meeting with my mentor and my coach and he says, Travis, you're doing too much. 
you need to eliminate, you need to automate, and you need to delegate. You need to figure out what in your life you need that doesn't drive any results. And you need to eliminate that 80-20. If it's required in the business, you need to figure out if you can find a software to automate it. And finally, if you can't eliminate it and you can't automate it, then you need to figure out someone you can delegate it to. And a light bulb went off my, my head. And I went on this mission to find a way to eliminate everything that wasn't needed. Amazon PPC obviously needed for your business. How can we automate it? I went through six different softwares, tried three different agencies. Nothing was, seemed to be working. But finally, I found one that worked. And we can now automate the parts of Amazon PPC that used to be so time consuming. The old way of doing Amazon PPC is doing these bid adjustments, calculating the bid adjustments, calculating the top of search, making the bid adjustments, adjusting budgets, calculating your maximum CPC. And you have to have this, you have this daily worry if you're doing enough for your Amazon PPC. Now, if you automate your Amazon PPC and you automate the right parts of it, you get to focus on the bigger strategy of your business, which can be the strategy of Amazon PPC, new product development delegating to higher performers, growing your team. That's what you can focus on when you automate all that little stuff that software can do. Software can calculate what I just showed you how to do. Software can calculate budgets. Software can calculate top of search placements. You don't have to do that stuff. The software can do it for you and they do it on an hourly basis. Whereas in, we used to do this every week for our clients, but now we have software that does it hourly for us. And they do it based on, when your conversion rate's higher, when your conversion rate's lower, they make all these adjustments so you don't have to. The software that you use should pay for itself within the first three months, easily. And if you wanna get completely off your plate, that's when you focus on delegation, agencies, hiring somebody, hiring somebody to learn the software to use in your business. This was my business after that 2019 year we discovered the software that really worked in January of 2020. You can see my ACOS went from that 50% all the way down to 37.5%. That's the blue line. While our sales went up from about 60,000 in advertising sales all the way up to 125,000. So we about doubled in the course of a year by automation. Because by automating that part of Amazon PPC, I could then focus on new product creation. We came out with six products this year to help grow and scale us faster. So think about that. Eliminate, automate, delegate. So your action items for this. Use the software to automate your Amazon PPC or delegate it to someone. Shameless plug, like our ad agency, Profitable Pineapple Ads. ProfitablePineapple.com if you want to apply to work with us. All right. I'm going to do a rapid fire bonus round after the recap. So the recap, rethink your ACOS, calculate your break even, figure out your target based on your product. Build out that negative phrase list and upload that to all your broad phrase and auto campaigns. Focus on the 20% of your products that produce 80% of your results and stop advertising for the other ones. Stop trying to figure out the other ones, just let them be. Focus on the 20% of search terms that are producing 80% of your profits. Make an exact match campaign for those and a broad match campaign uploading that negative phrase list. Pause your unprofitable keywords and campaigns weekly. Finally, automate and delegate. Now let's do a rapid fire on auto campaigns and product targeting campaigns. So your auto campaigns are discovery campaigns and you don't start an auto campaign until after your search is scaling, after you have those exact and broad scaling. Auto campaigns are for placement and not for search. They're meant to be for you to show up on the product pages and not built for search as much. You will get some search terms out of them, but mostly you'll get is ASINs out of those. The goal is for impressions and top of mind awareness. Start with a low cost per click. And the goal again is to mine ASINs and not search terms. Make sure you have a negative, heavy negative phrase list like we talked about in chapter two. Each ASIN should have its own auto campaign. Do not put more than one ASIN in an auto campaign. And auto campaigns are not really scalable. You will get a lot of sales from them sometimes but they're not scalable. Manual campaigns are. Let's jump over to product targeting campaigns. You're gonna hear a lot of the same things. Don't start targeting ads until after search is scaling. 
Product targeting campaigns are for placement on product pages and not for search. Goal is for impressions or top of mind awareness, Toma. Goal is to mine ASINs and not search terms. Each of your ASINs should have its own product targeting campaign. Product targeting campaigns are not scalable. Manual campaigns are. Don't target generic category targeting and let Amazon do the work for you. You will spend a ton of money. Get specific and target ASINs only. Use your search term report to target the right competitors. You saw in my search term report, I had some ASINs in there. Target those. If you do some research, type in your top search term. So for my example today, eyelid cleanser, and then target the top three organic, the top three revenue generating, and the top three sponsor products that are showing up in that search. That's gonna get you the most traffic. That's gonna be your 80, 20 of your traffic for your product targeting ads. Start with a low cost per click, start bids against competitor ASINs low, set up defensive product targeting ads. So your ASINs should be targeting your other ASINs and that creates a moat around your listing. So when somebody's on your product page, they see more of your products, it makes you look more like a brand. This should be one of the last ads that you set up inside Amazon. Focus on manual campaigns and search term dominance first. Questions, put them down in the comments down below. If you want to get my free Amazon PPC course where I go more in depth than even what I did today, go to profitablepineapple.com slash bonus to sign up for that. And then if you have any questions, email me, drtravis at profitablepineapple.com. If you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell to be notified whenever we come out with great videos, just like this one. Amazon PPC may seem like a complex subject, but it doesn't have to be, and that is why we created this channel. On top of Amazon PPC, we're gonna share different tactics and strategies that we've used to build a multi-million dollar business, as well as the strategies that we're using to build a $100 million company, which is our goal. We don't know how we're gonna get there yet, but that's our goal, and we wanna take you along for the ride. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, and hit the little bell to be notified whenever we come out with great business building and Amazon PPC strategies.